Hello everybody, my name is Michael, I'm running the Board Games Chronicle blog and today I would like to invite you to the Fields of Fire playthrough. Fields of Fire 2 <coughs> is a great simulation of the tactical uh, combat um, of the Marines. The first volume was focused mainly on, on uh, World War II in um, uh, Europe, also some Korean and Vietnam part, and uh, the volume two is focused on the fifth marine division. <coughs> it will have parallel landings in World War Two. We'll have uh, in Korea Chosin Reservoir, and we will have also Vietnam, uh, Vietnam fight here yeah, in the in the city. So, I've already did a movie uh, uh, regarding the unboxing of this of this um, game. I also put my first session report from the first mission. Today what I'm going to do is try a playthrough of the second mission. You can see it here. Japanese counterattack. It's defensive mission. Yeah, there's an error in the, in the rule book. Uh, we'll have like a map of four per four uh, cards and uh, it will last four turns. Uh, our goal is to simply secure row one against the Japanese counterattack. Let me just show it to you. Yeah. So what situation do we have? In a first scenario, uh, we moved from the uh, surf zone, through the beach zone, through the dunes, up to the palm grove. You can see in the Scenario book, how does it mission one, mission two, and mission three connect? So, yeah, <clears throat> this is mission one, mission two, mission three. Those four things uh, was the first uh, scenario. This is the second scenario, this is Palm Grove, and we have also the airfield here and the jungle here. So, first scenario, we land, second scenario, we defend against the Japanese counterattack, and in the third scenario, we'll be crossing the airfield. Okay, so what do we have here? This is our company book. As you can see, uh, we'll have some nice uh, fire support from artillery, mortars, and naval. Mm, as for the units, we'll have one unit of mortars, heavy mortars here. I have a lot of uh, platoons and platoon squads uh, mm, leveled up uh, thanks to the experience points uh, we got and also the MG platoon pretty, ni pretty nicely leveled up. Uh, we have some additional uh, equipment, mainly uh, forward observers, some bazookas some uh, demolitions and also some uh, flamethrowers. Uh, last but not least, the anti-tank gun. Let me show it to you. I think I put it here, yeah. So we'll have an anti-tank gun. Uh, other than that, uh, I already distributed the um, smoke and white phosphorus and all the pyrotechnics to the um, uh, company HQ and other HQs. Uh, as for the disposition of the, the company, I put some of the units into the reserve. Uh, this is so-called staging area. Here is our line of defense and main line of resistance. Yeah, so uh, this is our main line of resistance. <coughs> uh, what will happen uh, is that we have this potential contact in the row one. Let me just move that one here. So <clears throat> during the turn, it's important uh, to tell you how the game will move on. During the turn, this is a defensive mission. First, we will have a, a higher HQ event phase. Then we'll have the enemy activity before any of our activities. Then we'll have our activities. Uh, this will not happen. Then we have uh, um, mutual capture and retreat phase, vehicles, and only at the last moment we'll have a, a mutual combat phase. Yeah, so uh, what we shall see is because of those potential contacts here, uh, uh, we'll be drawing for the Japanese 
uh, packages they will be appearing somewhere over here we will be placing them there and they will be attacking us uh, this will be mainly tanks from what i saw so you can count to see a lot of those they are not the most powerful ones but still there can be a mass of them here now the japanese will be trying to attack us here and if we do not manage to push them of this uh, first row yeah we'll lose the scenario so the goal is to push them out of of, of this of this uh, row or simply prevent from getting there uh, i think there are no more special rules to this scenario uh, other than couple of standard ones for the Talelu mission let me just show them to you yeah so we have a couple of special rules for Talelu campaign and we'll have csr1 2 and 5 so <coughs> our uh, marine rifle squad doctrine will allow us to better concentrate fire japanese fanatics will mean that uh, there will be no uh, will it will be really hard for us to, to capture any any japanese so you can see any litter uh, would be uh, uh, yeah any fire team would be a litter team and a paralyzed team would be a casualty yeah and the fifth csr5 is about the light machine guns and the japanese light machine guns type 99 uh, i think it will not be able to concentrate fire uh, small things but they will have impact on on, on the gameplay so uh, i think we are ready there is no contact uh, everything is set and prepared so after this introduction we will be able to move to the turn one okay guys hello and welcome to the turn one of the mission two for the parallel landings fields of fire two <coughs> this will be a japanese counter-attack and uh, we will follow the sequence of play we start with a friendly higher hq phase uh, actually we do it on the on the turn two mm, so uh, when we jump to the enemy activity phase <coughs> so what japanese will do uh, there is also enemy high HQ event uh, segment starting on the turn 2, so nothing here. Now, enemy activity check segment. Place PC markers, and we already placed them here in the first row, potential contact A. Check every unit. There are no units. Uh, yes, so actually that's all for the enemy activity phase. <coughs> now we move to the friendly command phase uh, and we'll start the activations with the impulse first of all we'll start with our COHQ the COHQ is in contact with uh, battalion HQ yeah there is a link here to the staging area so we simply uh, be drawing cards and COHQ if I remember correctly yeah, this is veteran. So we draw a card, we look at the bigger number, we add one uh, for veteran status, and we also add one because there is no contact. So it's like four plus one plus one, it's six. So COHQ goes here. <coughs> and I think our COHQ will be activating a lot of units also in order to save save some of the orders yeah so first of all we would like uh, uh, activate a general sergeant so let me put it here so you remember one uh, so one goes here then we will activate um, First platoon HQ. Okay. Uh, we will activate also the third platoon HQ and the second platoon HQ. Uh, we want them to be prepared. Uh, we still have two. 
So <clears throat> one will go. I think MG Platoon HQ is okay. This is a veteran one, so uh, even if they draw for initiative, it should be still fine. Mm, but I would like CXO. Uh, yeah, so let me activate them. Okay. Do we want to save this one? Uh, yeah, let's save it. Let's save it. So now we go to the Platon HQ uh, company headquarters uh, staff impulse. Yeah. So uh, company staff impulse and Platon HQ. Platon HQ. Whom do we have? We have a whole three platoons, and we have gun gunner sergeant here yeah, and XO. So start with the first platoon. The first platoon is already veteran. We are in contact and we are activated. So we have two plus one for no contact and plus one for being veteran. So I I hope they will get more. So I think it would be good to seek cover for those units. Uh, yeah, first platoon, sorry, is of course here. So, uh, order for the first squad and second squad, they are both veterans, so they will draw like, uh, no, they will not draw cards, we'll draw that amount of cards, and then we'll see whether they found any cover, so, drawing the first card, no cover, rally, rally, no cover, so, we used one of those command, Unfortunately, uh, I think we still would like to get get some cover for those units, but maybe uh, we'll do this next turn. Hopefully, we'll survive that one. Uh, we don't have too many orders, so I don't want to utilize them. Second platoon, and we draw a card to see how many orders. Four. Uh, plus one, plus one, six. Fantastic. So it's much better draw. What second platoon can do? I would again try to seek cover. Mm, so uh, let me correct this. Yeah. So I will seek cover first of all with this uh, first squad. Uh, this is second platoon. First squad is veteran. The second squad is veteran. Okay. So uh, still that doesn't change anything because you draw that amount of cards, of course. Sorry to, to, to forget it. Okay, one, two, three, no. Again, nothing. Mm. I think I will try again to see cover now with this unit. One, two, three. Okay, we are very unlucky. And I think... Mm, it would be good to have some cover. The platoon HQ can see the cover and then <coughs> order those two units to try to infiltrate there. So yeah, let me try it with a second platoon HQ to see cover for themselves. Yeah, finally we have a cover. Okay, let me grab one cover from here. So they are behind the cover, and what I will do immediately, I will use the last those two orders to uh, infiltrate from the card uh, to the cover. Yeah. So let me draw. We, now it's important that those two units are veterans. First of all, first squad. One, two, three cards. Ah, we have reshuffle. Okay, in a moment. So we do the reshuffle. And we draw one more card. <clears throat> if we do not draw infiltrate, they will, of course, will be exposed. Mm -hmm. No, we didn't. So they will be exposed. Uh, let me find it. Yeah, so they are exposed, but undercover. And also those guys will try to get undercover. 
infiltrate to the cover. Yeah, we got it. So they will not have exposed. Okay, so that was for the second platoon. Third platoon, let me check. Also veteran. So four uh, plus one for no contact and plus one for uh, veteran. So they have six. The third platoon uh, will try the similar trick, so to seek the cover. Let me try the first and second of the third platoon veteran and line. But <coughs> still will be drawing the flicker. So first of all, first squad seeking the cover. You see, they found it. Let's just move it a little bit up. Yeah, it will be easier to see the cards for you. So they found the cover. Mm, the first thing, yeah, I actually will move all of them there. Just let me see if it will mean exposed or not. So the first order, the second and the third will be used for those two units to vet and vet trying to infiltrate into this cover. Uh, third platoon veteran, yeah, successful. Uh, second unit the, uh, line, line unsuccessful. Of course, we need to remember that those two uh, platoon HQs will not get the orders from company HQ because they are undercover and we have a pretty poor radius. Yeah. So third platoon, I think that will be all for them. Uh, sorry, we have six, so we should be at three, I believe. Should be at three. Uh, Gunner sergeant, veteran, ordered. Wow, okay, one plus one plus one, it's three. That's not the best result. I would like to hide this AT mm. gun, but you know, when I go undercover, I will not be able to get the orders from the company HQ. Uh, still, it's it's worth it, yeah. So let me seek the cover with a gunnery sergeant. Three cards as per the card, yeah, symbol. Yes, we have cover. And let me try to put this infantry. This is, you see, uh, this anti-tank. Mm, where, where do I have it? Where do I, yes, it's here. This is the table with vehicles and anti-tank weapon charts. And we have our anti-tank, yeah, uh, it should be here, 37 millimeters anti-tank. It's uh, target type A, I, so this is infantry. And from the interesting things you can see that it has, it will use the granite attack to check whether it scored a hit on the vehicle and then depending on the mm, how far it is so so the range point blank uh, this is close uh, long very long it will have different uh, modifiers yeah so i think because this is infantry it still can seek a cover yeah uh, we already have this cover found so let me just now try to infiltrate under this cover <clears throat> All the attachments uh, are line, so these are two cards. Well, reshuffle once again. I need to remember to reshuffle always because... Yeah, then, then you can go through the whole deck and not, not, not reshuffling at all. Okay, so... No, so there will be... First of all, we used the two... Uh, the two orders, yeah. and that one will be unfortunately exposed, but undercover. Uh, so this was... Uh, oh, sorry, I put first surgeon here. Yeah, uh, evidently I did a mistake, this should be... This should be, uh, yeah, gunner surgeon. One. I hope everything is still fine. Uh, okay. 
I think something is not right because we have like four, six, seven, and we have only utilized uh, less than six company HQ uh, orders. So I think that's too much. So anyhow, <coughs> whom we ordered? We ordered the three platoons, and uh, we ordered gunnery sergeant. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, six. This is fine. I think this is fine. So now we'll go with the first sergeant. We draw for him. It's four plus one plus one, it's six. And first sergeant definitely would like to hide with a bazooka in the cover. So we are trying to seek the cover with the uh, first sergeant. Cover, yes, we have cover. And we would like now to move undercover, to infiltrate undercover with this assault thing. I'm just thinking if I'm playing this right because the infiltration requires you to have a volume of fire uh, on the card. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, I'm right. So uh, you cannot uh, actually uh, infiltrate if you do not have volume of fire uh, what you can do you can seek another cover but that we don't want so that could be a potentially wrong play but yeah that guy got the cover uh, that got the cover so yeah potentially Potentially that could be a problem uh, because all those guys moved undercover. Uh, there is no volume of fire, so they cannot cannot infiltrate. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, what do we have now? We have now a first sergeant. Uh, yeah. So the guy who used one, and then we have exposed here. So just. I need to remember one of those small rules that whenever mm, uh, whenever you move under cover you are exposed. This should not be a big deal for us because uh, we'll be placing here uh, the um, potential contact markers. It will be uh, revealing the packages, so it still should be safe. But yeah, that's, that's good to remember. Okay. So this is the ser first sergeant. He found the cover and ordered uh, the bazooka. I can tell you that I thought this would be very easy and straightforward turn, but even with those small uh, rules, I see it's easy to make make mistakes. So far, I think this looks good. Uh, company XO, yeah, let's see how many. He will get four, not many. Not many orders. So with not many orders, uh, what shall we do? I think seek cover. Mm, let me seek cover with the bazooka. So to be on the safe side, yeah, there is a cover. And bazooka is fine, so we just draw two. And then we'll move company XO to this. And we will utilize that way two orders mm. so let me move it here okay that's all for the impulse now initiative segment segment we have two hqs which we did in order okay uh, now let me check one thing. Okay, uh, the order. It doesn't matter uh, who will move first. Uh, first mortar section. Uh, they will be line. So this is three plus one for no contact, and that's all. And I will save it. Uh, max safe line is four. Yeah. And now <coughs> MG platoon. Let me. Draw one card, it will be four plus one for veteran and plus one for no contact, so it's six. Again, I will try to seek cover with this MG and then we'll move uh, MG platoon there. 
I do a free card. No, no luck. Uh, so I'll try MG Platoon, drawing cards for cover. No luck. To utilize and I don't think there is need to do anything, anything more with both. Okay. <clears throat> Now we have general initiative. We have zero for general initiative, so there's no problem whom to, to activate. And now um, let's move further. Uh, we, we don't have this at all because it's for offensive missions and combat patrols. We move to mutual capture and retreat phase. There is no situation which would demand any action from, uh, from us. <clears throat> so we just move, uh, uh, we move through this vehicle phase, mutual combat summit. Uh, we update fire missions, there are no incomings, and we evaluate potential contact markers. We have four of them, and now the fun will start. The Japanese will come. Let me bring to you uh, the packages. Um, and here, there is no contact, we have a, a potential contact marker A, so this will be an automatic contact, we don't need to draw to check whether there will be contact. What we need to do is uh, randomize uh, uh, which out of those four will be first, so one, two, three, four. Randomizer of four is one, so it will be this potential contact who is getting resolved first. Let me move it away. Uh, just here because it will need it a lot. So now to get the package, we go to the scenario book. And let me tell you how, how do we do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are here. We have to. A mission to Japanese counterattack. So, uh, we know that uh, we need to roll randomizer of 10 and check the number of package. Here we have the packages, which are possible in this mission. Number one and two will be a pre-plotted mortar or artillery fire. For 1718, uh, 1718 will be a mission to assault and tanks. Uh, 20 is an error, there's no 20, so the errata says draw until you get the valid uh, result. So, yeah, we know what we have to do. Uh, then there will be also the placement, but I will tell you about it in a moment. Uh, so, uh, here, uh, potential contact, randomizer of 10, 10, 8. What we have as 8? As 8, we have 18. 18, okay, and the package 18, tanks, one rifle squad and two tanks marked exposed in placement card. Okay, so we have two tanks, and Japanese squad. Okay, how do we place them? As you can see, here is the placement instruction. <clears throat> so this is column one, yeah? And we need to place them as per this instruction uh, with maximum range, line of sight, and uh, spotted, already spotted. So what we do, uh, we need to roll randomizer of five to see whether it will be front or whether it will be right front, yeah? So, uh, because uh, the range of those units uh, is uh, long, 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 so it's like one, two, three, yeah, so it's point blank, close, long. So, it will be either here, firing that direction, or either here, firing that direction. Uh, let's see, randomizer of five, five, it's three, three is front. Okay, so this is front, 
So we put all of those three here. All of them are exposed, yeah, so let me just mark it. And what happens? An automatic fire opens. First of all, of course, those Japanese units fire at us at the placement card. So let me mark it. But we also fire at them. So here is PDF, primary direction of fire. Primary direction fire, and we also fire from here, and it's only fire from us. Okay, and because we hit from two sides, we have a crossfire. Nice. Uh, let me move it back here. So we have a crossfire, and uh, we will be, of course, having the most heavy volume of fire used. So this will be actually uh, those MGs, I think. So this will be automatic weapons. It's even potentially hitting the tanks. And here we would have a small arms fire from this Japanese squad. That's what comes at us. Let's come at them. That's what come at, uh, comes at us. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Before we progress, a couple of fixes, uh, which I've noticed I have to do. First of all, uh, those tanks will be projecting an automatic volume of fire. So it should not be small arms, but a full automatic volume of fire. Okay, second correction is that we have now, we had a, no contact, but <clears throat> with one, uh, uh, one friendly occupied cart is under a volume of fire marker, we'll have a contact, yeah, so we need to put it to mark it. Third thing which I would like to correct is regarding cover. So seeking cover means that you are getting exposed if you if you found it. So all those units here, 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 here and here, who are under cover uh, will be unfortunately exposed. And the last thing uh, was connected to the tanks. You see, in attachments, uh, we have written down that the M4 Sherman uh, tank section, uh, quantity two, with five tank ammo have uh, are appearing in uh, mission two or event. I thought this is uh, this is yeah uh, during the mission two with event. So that was my bet. <clears throat> so what we should have, we should have those beautiful Sherman tanks too, with tank platoon. So let me just draw for tank platoon and its activations. Sorry to do it just now. It's line, of course, so it has three activations. And of course, I would use both of them to activate those units. That's a no-brainer. Uh, let me just check where I have activations. Okay, so I activated those both tanks, and now uh, where I would put them, uh, I would, of course, put them where I do not have the bazookas. I have bazooka here and here, so I would put them here and here. Sorry for those mistakes. I must admit, Fields of Fire, while pretty straightforward game, has those small tweaks, rules, and you know, sometimes a special, uh, special rules, uh, which you need to remember. So I put the tank platoon, Fine, I corrected the volume of fire. I also did correction with the expose and so on. Okay, guys, so after those corrections, uh, let me move now to the next point. So, so we'll be evaluating one of those 
three potential contacts. Let me check for which uh, we'll be checking it. Uh, one, two, three for the third one. And now, <clears throat> because we have a contact, uh, we should draw seven cards. If on any of them there is a contact, we will have a contact here. If not, it will be just removed. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cover, nothing. Rally, rally, cover, rally, contact. The last card. Okay. <clears throat> so now we roll to check which package we'll get. Randomizer of 10, 6. 6 is 17. Let us see what 17 brings. And the 17th assault. Two rifle squad attempting to infiltrate placement card and one tank. Okay, maximum range uh, LOS. Okay, so uh, this will be here or here. Uh, the squads have a very long, uh, long range and the tanks have also a long range. They got a squad. So, sorry, have all of them, yeah. So <clears throat> now for the placement, we roll a randomizer of five on column four to see whether it will be left front or front. Randomizer of five, it's four front. So they will be placed here. Yeah. And now, mm, those two uh, will be trying to infiltrate their line quality. So we draw for infiltration. Now, so the top one is exposed. And the second one, yeah, it infiltrated the airfield successfully. <clears throat> uh, we automatically open the fire on this path and on this path, of course. Mm -hmm. And this PDF uh, will be mutual. This was the card triggering the contact, so it should be like this. Now, how to do that? Uh, let me do it like this. Again. I will catch these guys in crossfire and they uh, will be attacking with uh, automatic weapons our engines uh, crossfire where do I have it so bear with me ah, got it and the tank will uh, be firing with the automatic weapons uh, immediately here. Mm -hmm. uh, now uh, we should uh, continue. Let me check. Do we go move to engage? Yes, two plus friendly occupied cars are under uh, volume of fire. So we are engaged now. Mm, it will be here. Engage will mean that we will need to draw to check the contact here. One, two, randomizer of two, so it's two. We'll be checking here. And with the engage, mm, we draw five cards. Looking for contact. Okay. Okay, we have reshuffle. Actually, we had a reshuffle at the top, so I need to do it now. I really hope that we could not get an additional uh, additional uh, contact, but let's see. No contact. Contact for five. Okay. Uh, so some more contact. <clears throat> let's see which package it will be. Randomizer of 10, 
is 8, 8 is 18, 18 I believe this will be two tanks, uh, yeah, so the same package is here, the problem is we do not have any more um, possibility to fire because this card fires here, this card fires here, this here and this here. Uh, yes. Okay, and they should be marked exposed. Let's try this. So now uh, we go to the last potential contact and uh, we draw again five cards. We are engaged. Ah, before, sorry, uh, we need to place the volume of fire from those tanks here. It might be a turkey shot, as they said, but still. Uh, not so easy. Uh, I will check whether those tanks are firing, as I told you in a moment. Uh, just let me go through the whole placement uh, once again. So, uh, the last. Let me draw uh, for the last uh, potential contact five cards looking for the contact. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. At least not no contact on the last card. Now, before progressing to the mutual combat phase, uh, I will uh, no sorry before combat effect segment. I will check those tanks. Bear with me. Okay, so I will follow the interpretation here that basing volume of fires uh, are the volume of fires printed on the unit counters. Yeah, like here. They usually require no commands or attempts to implement. Yeah, so what I will do, mm, I will assume that they could fire. Okay, so uh, we assume that this automatic fire is uh, from the tanks is, is as it should be. So now we start resolving <coughs> all the combat. The combat is simultaneous, so we will not change the volume of fire markers before we end uh, this phase. Uh, let's start with a fire toward us. Uh, so uh, we will start um, with with a fire here. Of course, the fire uh, toward tanks and uh, vehicles is resolved in the vehicle phase, so we will not do anything about both tanks or our tanks in, in, in this phase. Uh, okay, uh, so first things first, uh, I will start with a fire against us. So on this card, <coughs> uh, we'll go step by step for all the units. I would need to check their experience. Yeah, so MG pla uh, Platoon HQ, uh, it has plus two for the card and uh, simply uh, minus one uh, from the automatic weapons volume of fire. So it's plus one, plus one is pin. Okay, I think we need a lot of pin markers. Actually, I can use those from the tanks because they will be anyhow removed. Uh, I think I saw on board game geek somewhere that there is no need to, p to keep it. Mm. on the tanks, on the vehicles, the exposed marker, because due to the sequence of the turn, they will be always removed. Now, one and one MG, this is plus uh, one, it's pin, so let me leave this pin here. <coughs> now, uh, we move to those guys, this is plus one cover, plus uh, two for this, plus three cover, minus two exposed and minus one for the automatic fire so zero second platoon hq it's hit via veteran 
veteran becomes a P uh, vet is let me check I, I just need to verify the casualty type I have not done the pinned pinned okay it could have gone worse uh, now uh, uh, first squad from the second platoon on zero is a miss then second squad is a hit and the uh, second squad from the second platoon is a veteran veteran is uh, pinned and casualty okay so we'll have some losses here So those two units will be pinned. Let me move it a little bit. Just to clean, we'll remove those exposed one. Yeah. And we will have one casualty. Actually, that casualty, you can say fortunately, is in our casualty collection point. Okay. So that's all for this card. Now they are firing here too. Same, uh, MG has um, plus two, uh, minus one from uh, this automatic weapons volume of fire. So this is uh, plus one, plus one is a hit. Two, second uh, squad is line. This will be line, no, veteran, veteran. So let's look at the veteran. Assault team. So if they turn over and we got an assault team, there will be a lot of them, I think, still. Yeah, okay. Now for the observer, for the observer, uh, this is on plus one. It's a miss. Uh, because we were hit, we are of course pinned. And both units are pinned. I would love to have tweezers to help me move with it, but I don't have such now. Maybe in the future. Okay, uh, so this is what happens here now. The third platoon, uh, they are exposed. Mm, uh, they have plus one cover and plus two cover here, so all in all zero. And we draw for the third platoon. It's a miss. Uh, first squad, it's a pin. And the second squad, it's a pin could have been worse. Now we have here the uh, COXR, and so <clears throat> on zero it's a pin, mm, and bazooka on a zero it's a miss. Okay. Mm, now uh, nothing here. Here again, <coughs> MG, it's plus two, uh, minus one for a volume of fire, so it's uh, like plus one. On plus one, it's a hit. Uh, second from second, it's a veteran. Uh, sorry, these are the MGs. Yeah, with a vet veteran. So we have a litter team. Unfortunately, we have a litter team here. Let me find one. Yes, and they are of course pinned. Uh, I will mark all units in this row as pinned. Observer. Uh, it's a pin. Okay, so fine. The whole line is pinned. Fine or not fine, yeah, of course. Uh, first platoon HQ on a plus one. It's a pin. One one, it's a miss. Second squad, ah, it's a hit. A uh, second squad, uh, first platoon, it's a line. 
so assaulting. And it will be of course pinned because they were hit. So we got an assault pin. I can say pretty honestly that uh, having seen so many exposed units I thought it will go much worse. Uh, let me just remove those exposed. We don't need them anymore. And we'll now fire towards the Japanese. Of course, only against uh, uh, the infantry for the time being. So on this card, uh, we have uh, this squad. Uh, the modifier for this is minus two for exposed, minus one for automatic weapons, and minus one for uh, for the uh, uh, for the crossfire. So we fire on this squad. Reshuffle action. A lot of things happening, yeah, indeed. So after we shuffle, so it's minus four, minus four is hit, and this is a line unit. Let's see what it brings. A line is, uh, okay, fire team and casualty. Casualty will have here. Yeah, the exposed will be removed. The casualty goes here, and fire team is here. They are, of course, uh, reduced. Actually, we are reduced to because of the two hits to two fire teams. Mm -hmm. mm, put the casualty here, and they are pinned. Yeah. Uh, so now here also minus four, minus four is hit line. And uh, we go for the first one. Uh, line is paralyzed. Okay, paralyzed. So we move it over. We take a paralyzed team. We put it here where we did not expose, where we pinned. And those guys, those has just minus two. Minus two. Minus two is pinned. So they all are just simply pinned. Uh, uh, let me see. Okay. Now let's let me update. Uh, the situation of the map. First of all, the ammunition. We used some ammunition from our MGs. Yeah. So we have like seven out of eight now. Okay. Um, and what else? Uh, uh, let me check the volumes of fire. This stays, we still have at least no. Uh, this MG and this MG are pinned, so it changes from automatic fire uh, to the mm, small arms fire. Mm -hmm. Here we have still one MG not pinned, so it's firing, so this is fine. And towards us, yeah, uh, the tanks are still fighting. We have five of them, so a lot, really a lot. We'll see how it goes. And uh, for the cleanup phase, uh, we removed pyrotechnics, illumination, exposed, yeah, that we moved. Uh, moved, fired. Uh, we didn't have to activate those, although, yeah. It seems that we just lost those activations that was not needed, those activations that was not needed, so uh, it's fine. Okay, green, we didn't have grenades. Uh, we evacuate casualties, yeah, so this one is evacuated, it will count as a point. 
and if a defensive mission remove any unresolved PC markers. You know, uh, I saw the discussion of a board game gig that you actually could not could choose not to occupy those hexes and not trigger those PC markers, but it would be totally against uh, uh, against uh, I think what the designer would like to see in the game and against the spirit of this game. So I think uh, a fight uh, as it is now is it's completely okay. Thank you very much for being uh, with me in the turn one of the Fields of Fire. I'm sorry for all the mistakes uh, carried out by me. I know some of them still could escape, escape me, but I hope that uh, this turn one gives you a good overview how the mechanics of the game works, how the chain of command works, how you give orders, uh, what the sequence, uh, how do you resolve the battle. Yeah. I'm having a lot of fun with, with this game and, and, and hope to continue soon. Thank you very much. Bye for today.